Hello and welcome to Reporters, the show here on France 24 that goes behind the headlines. On today's programme, we look back at World War I. Global commemorations of the Great War began a century on from its start in 2014 and are set to last until 2018. Remembrance of a war that 100 years on still ranks as one of the world's deadliest ever conflicts. Today, we look back 100 years to 1915, the year that trench warfare became the daily experience for so many. For many soldiers, hours, days, months were spent in the miserable tunnels that had come to line the front. For many, boredom set in along with disease, cold and damp and, of course, the horrors of war itself. The soldiers did what they could to pass the time and to make their squalid living conditions a little more bearable. Some drew, some wrote, some even made sculptures out of the walls around them. Our reporter Julien Sauvager went in search of the memories of the trenches that speak to us so clearly 100 years on of the many young lives that were lost. It's a story of departed spirits and forests haunted by memories. The First World War left its enduring mark in this region in northern France. The quiet woods tell the stories of the soldiers who were stationed here. The horror of battle, the suffering of the combatants, their sacrifices and their sense of honour, as well as their daily lives, dreams, fantasies and nostalgia. In 1914, this old limestone quarry was taken over by the French army. Hundreds of soldiers lived here, battalions coming and going over four years of conflict. The front was in this area from mid-September 1914. This quarry is about 250 meters behind the first French line. Few people know of the secrets deep within these woods, dark and hidden. Historian Thierry has spent 20 years digging into the quarry's past. There we go. His head's still there. He knows each nook and cranny of these dark mazes. Another insider is Bruno, a volunteer who spent the last decade restoring the underground galleries, trying to preserve what buried treasure remains each piece of graffiti or sculpture etched into the walls by the entrenched soldiers. We do our maintenance work with odds and ends. There's also Christopher, a German tour guide who tries to pass on his passion to younger generations. They're all trying to tell this war story through art, the first-hand testimony left behind by those who lived the experience. The signs are everywhere. Here, a sphinx guards the entrance of the old quarry. Meters away, a knight on horseback. In retrospect, a man reminiscent of Marshal Pétain, one of France's first World War heroes. He's clearly an officer because he's wearing a peat cap. The others have helmets. The headgear is what tells us he's an officer. Pétain was named commander-in-chief on May the 15th, 1917, when no one was left here. He wasn't very well known before that. Nearby, standing guard against the German enemy, is Joan of Arc, the legendary French warrior heroine. Here's Joan of Arc carrying a cross and wearing a crown. There was an inscription which has unfortunately now disappeared. It once read, they will not pass. This was the work of a soldier who had been a sculptor before the war, Louis Laclabar. Of course, he must have had permission from his officers. The command post is nearby. The officers allowed him to work on this bas relief, agreed to the logistics. He had to set up scaffolding here. The same soldier was behind several sculptures in the complex, including an Italian inspired fountain, a gargoyle, and the Sphinx, which a hundred years later still guards the quarry entrance. Professional or amateur, inspired by the other artists among their ranks, soldiers slowly added their personal touches to the quarry that had become their makeshift home.
Many of the works depict their daily lives. Themes of honor or the army, like this military cross near the officer's housing. But there were also less abstract subjects. Banned from the front lines, women were on the soldiers' minds and these limestone walls. On the left here, you see a woman, a Parisienne, in a beautiful outfit. She's leaving her house. She's gotten her foot out the door. She's putting out her hand and saying, Oh dear, it's raining. The soldier used the template of sorts, a postcard by an illustrator who was very in vogue at the beginning of the 20th century, Xavier Sager. The artist appears to have had that while he was making this engraving. Deeper into the quarry, the stone women appear to shed their fashionable clothes, encouraging the entrenched soldiers to forget the horrors of war and remember the outside world. They helped brighten the surroundings. They were a distraction, a form of entertainment. They helped pass the time which could drag without some kind of occupation. Soldiers could sink into a depression, so they wanted to keep busy at any cost. A temptress carved into rock, reaching out to even the hardest of hearts. The French soldiers of 1914 had heavy burdens to bear. Death was a constant companion, and religion became a refuge. In the face of bombardment and the horrors of war, certain soldiers turned to their faith to make it through. The chaplain of the regiment used this chapel in the depths of the quarry for Sunday services, or sometimes for funeral masses. The quarry walls reveal the traces of nearly four years of daily struggle. Near the chapel, this soldier stands guard at the front line. This fighter is looking out at the no man's land before him. He's got his gear, his gun, the protective bandages on his legs, his kit bag, his cartridge belt. The soldier has a helmet and even a pipe. If you look closely to the left of his mess tin, you can see a rat hoping to get whatever provisions are in the soldier's knapsack. As relics of history, such works of art are unique and valuable, but they're also in danger of being lost, threatened by erosion and mold. Here it's completely black, it's really under attack. Some parts of the quarry have collapsed completely, destroying any trace of the art within. Thierry can only record the damage of time, taking photos and detailing every engraving, every story, before they disappear forever. Through the trenches still visible in the ground and on the other side of no man's land, Bruno addresses a group of students. Here in blue, you see the first front line of the Germans, and in red, that of the French. There's about 250 meters between the edge of the woods and this farm. He's focused on the old German trenches, kilometer after kilometer dug by German soldiers. They too sought protection against air bombardments and artillery fire by hiding underground. There were just a few of us at the beginning. Four or five of us came with a rope to get down into a hole. Then we brought down a shovel and started to dig away the layers of earth. And once we realized how special this site was, we were here every Saturday, even vacations, trying to clear away, unblock and secure things. The group of volunteers found artifacts, treasures from history, personal items that belonged to both sides as French troops advanced and took control of this position in 1917. Here's a German cartridge belt, a gas mask, French plates and a French flask, and lots of wine bottles from both the French and German sides. Everything we find here stays here. 
to show it to young members of the public. 12 degrees Celsius, total darkness and 80 percent humidity. The living conditions in these tunnels were far from easy. A difficult underground world full of mysteries for visitors from France, Germany or the UK. Feeling the damp firsthand, being in the dark sometimes, it paints a realistic picture of what the soldiers were going through at the time. It was really important for me to come visit in person. It gives you an idea of what it was like. It is really important. German tour guide Christopher helps organize these visits for young Europeans. It's something really, really important. We like to see these young people coming together. And we remind them that this kind of gathering that we see right now, that was impossible at the time of the war. This trip back through time ends here, the final resting place for millions of soldiers. One and a half million Germans, 1.4 million French, and 900,000 English soldiers lost their lives in the trenches. Something to note about the British casualties is each fallen soldier had the right to an individual grave. That's what you see here. If you look at the tombstones, you see a lot of inscriptions that say, soldier of the Great War, and in German, unknown soldier. In French and German cemeteries, it was common practice for those who weren't identified to be buried in mass graves. A hundred years later, this sea of graves is the ultimate public memorial to the soldiers of the First World War. Their sacrifices still remembered, and their individual stories still resonating with visitors from around the world. That report by Julien Sauvager, who joins me now here in the studio. Hello, Julien. Thanks very much Hello. for being with us. First of all, uh, you speak in the report of a place uh, that is secret, that is forbidden. Does that mean that it cannot be visited? Absolutely. Most of the time, it's impossible to visit these places, in particular the one you saw in the report, as it is now private property. But also because there are safety concerns with entire parts of the quarry collapsing, meaning it's very dangerous to go there. The owner would be held responsible if an accident occurred. The majority of the quarries located along the front line and that were used by the soldiers as shelters now belong to private landowners and are not equipped to welcome the public. Without the historian who guided us during the report, I would never have been allowed to visit and discover that exceptional place. What is being done uh, to preserve uh, these monuments to history? It truly is one of the major problems faced by historians as well as by all those fascinated in World War I heritage and these treasures. Nothing is done. The only quarry that has been protected and that can welcome visitors is one located on the Chemin des Dames. But the problem is, there is not much cave art there because it was a hot spot with intense and ongoing fighting. Obviously, soldiers stationed there had little time to draw or sculpt. The quarries located elsewhere on the front line have not been protected. Nothing's done really. They're also kept secret to avoid pillaging, as you have people who don't hesitate to tear off entire blocks to get their hands on these art pieces. That's why it's urgent to safeguard this heritage, honor World War I soldiers and enable for their memory to live on. Well, thank you very much indeed uh, for your report, which enabled us uh, to have a look uh, at what so few get a chance to see. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Julien Sauvager. That brings us to the end of today's Reporters. Uh, do check in with us again next week, though, uh, for another look behind the headlines. Thank you.